So in this video, let's look at InDesign. This is industry standard software. And so in, you know, a 10 minute or less video to show you everything that you need to know to create a book with it um, is just not possible. Um, I do have a course that is very newbie friendly, um, specific to creating a journal and creating a planner as projects. It's very practical. Um, I will leave the link in the description, but let's just learn how to set up a document and create some lined paper. So a notebook interior. So I'm going to create new and that will pop up a window here. My computer's being a little slow. Let's try again. Okay. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the units to inches. And so let's make this a seven by 10 notebook. So I can set the width and the height seven wide and 10 high. I'm going to check facing pages because I want to be able to see two pages together at a time, like an open book. Um, I only need one column. For my margins, I'm going to do 0.375 all the way around. Um, if I was doing a thicker book, I would have a 0.5 inside margin, but this will not be a thicker book. So I'm going to do 0.375 all the way around and I don't need bleed and slug. That only applies to when your images extend all the way. Actually, no, I do need bleed and slug because we're doing a notebook. Um, so let's do 0.125 all the way around as a bleed and we will create. Okay, so here is our document and we have a document here that has our margins of 0.375 right over here. And we also have this little red line extending off the white area. That is our bleed area. So we actually want to design all the way to the red. That way when it is printed and the publisher cuts it along this white line, if they happen to make a crooked cut or something, if something's not quite lined up right, they've got some excess to work with. I call bleed your margin for error. Okay, so now we have our document. We wanna create a line. So everything you want to do in InDesign is mostly in this toolbar. And let me point out to you really quickly that there are different um, layouts of the tools and I am using typography mode and that's up in this upper right corner. Just make sure that typography is checked. Um, as you start to use the software, you might prefer a different layout, but this is the one that I like um, to use. So right over here, we've got this little diagonal line. This is a line. And so I'm going to pick a spot off where the bleed is. And we know that we've got a little bit of a margin before we start with our lines in most notebook paper. So um, we've got the document starting up here at zero. And so I think an inch might be too much. Let's go about three quarters of an inch down. And if I want to, I can click in this ruler area and pull down a guide. And now I'm going to look off to the very far left at that vertical ruler. And I can see that I am lined up to about three quarters of an inch. So now I have a guideline here. So still in this line tool, I'm gonna to go to the very edge with my cursor and I'm going to hold down shift and then click and drag while holding my mouse button all the way to the opposite red line. So now I have my line. I'm going to get this guide out of the way so I can just drag it back up out of the way. And I am now on this arrow key, which is the selection tool. And I've got this line highlighted. You can see that it's blue. That means it's selected. And I'm going to switch the weight of it to about half of a point because right now it's just a little bit too thick. And then I'm also going to go to the color of the line, which is right up here, the stroke. And I'm just going to adjust the tint down. Now you can just change the actual color of it to something more gray as well, but I'm just going to tint it down a little bit and that will just make it a little lighter. People don't like to write on heavy black lines. So we want kind of thin sort of non-obtrusive lines. Okay. So now I'm just going to click anywhere in my document to get rid of that selection. And now you can see my line. And so it looks good. It looks straight. It's about as far down as I would like it. I'm going to select it again, again with the arrow key. And then I'm going to go to the edit menu 
and scroll down to step and repeat and you can see it automatically added some lines so but let me back up and show you what we've got here I've got preview selected that will show me a preview of what it's going to look like and I have an offset that is vertical of 0.28 inches. That is the distance between lines of college ruled paper. So I'm gonna go with that and it's made three repeats for me. I need more than that. So I'm just going to say 20, I'm just typing that in. And sometimes there's a little lag with the preview, so I will unselect it and reselect it, and that shows me my preview again. So we're about three quarters of the way down the page now. I'm just gonna use the up arrow to increase, and we'll see how far we need to go to get near that bottom margin. I think that looks pretty good, so I'm gonna say okay. And there we go. So now they're all selected. I can just click anywhere to deselect that. And now we're pretty much done with notebook paper here. The only thing you might want to do is add a little vertical margin in there. Sometimes uh, notebook paper does have that. Journal paper, not as much. Usually just like straight up notebook paper. But if you wanted to do that, you would do the same thing. You would take your line tool and maybe go in about three quarters of an inch and I would start up at this top red line, hold shift, go all the way to the bottom red line, and let go, and then I would also change it to 0.5, and go to the stroke up here, and just turn the tint down again. Um, this might be something, a lot of times that margin line is in red, so you could make that red too. So let's go to the stroke and choose red, and let's turn the tint back up a little bit so it looks red. And then I'm going to go to the selection tool, click away, and here we have our little red line. You could do the same thing with this. If you wanted to do it in color, you could make these blue lines, which notebooks paper usually is. So there's just an introduction to InDesign. Um, some of the reasons that I really like InDesign for books is, first of all, um, if you want to do uh, something that looks professional, this is the software you have to learn, um, or something similar like Affinity Publisher. You can do stuff with other software, but I feel like if you're going to make this a business, you need to do, use the proper tools for the job. Um, one, another reason I like it is um, it has a feature called Masters, and what Masters will do will allow you to create almost like your own little template for the book. So for example, if I had created this notebook paper in a master, I could just add a whole bunch of pages with that master applied and every single page would look like this. Um, so it allows you to create a design once and then add as many pages as you want of that. Um, there's also things called paragraph styles and character styles, which are useful for when you're laying out a print book with actual content. It keeps all the formatting very consistent. Um, it also um, allows you to make interactive PDFs. So this buttons and forms area will allow you to make a PDF that's fillable. And you know, if you're going to sell, um, repurpose your books as downloads, digital downloads, um, you can set yourself apart by making your digital downloads um, interactive so people can type right in Adobe Reader, which is free, um, the information into uh, text fields and they can, you can have checkbox and all sorts of things. Um, the other things that I like about it, well, it's, it's just got a lot of very versatile things. Um, you saw the step and repeat. That's perfect for journals and planners where you're creating stuff that you want to um, space evenly. It also has some really nice alignment tools. So let me just um, draw a couple boxes over here. And let me just um, select both of them. So I'm going to go to the arrow key and select both of them. And now I've got some options up here for alignment. So I can align them all to the left. And now they're perfectly in line with each other along the left edge. 
If I had more boxes, I could distribute them evenly, either in the vertical direction or the horizontal direction. So it's got some very nice um, automated tools to align things. Um, and then you can also, of course, import things into text frames. Um, you can even create your book covers in InDesign. You can't do graphical edits, but you can lay everything out for your cover and export it as a print-ready PDF. So that's some of the reasons I like InDesign, and um, I hope that you will uh, consider InDesign as something for your publishing business. Um, it might not be an investment you can make at the very beginning, but if all you need is InDesign, it's only about $20 a month to buy it by itself as a subscription as opposed to the entire creative uh, cloud suite. So um, it is is actually not that bad when you're thinking about uh, the tools that you need to run a proper business.